there we are. We are live. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay. We'll just wait till we have people. And comments. There's my, there's my people. All right. Welcome. So, we'll give everybody a chance to sign on. Boy, time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? Anyway, welcome to Tools and Techniques Thursday. Uh, I'm Barb. You probably already know that. Coming to you today from, obviously, my sewing room. And this is Tools and Techniques Thursday. And we're going to carry on with our thread painting that we got started with last week. I hope everybody's had a great week, had a chance to get outside, enjoy the weather. It's gotten smoking hot here in Calgary. I don't know what it's like wherever you are, but um, yeah, people are taking the opportunity after our cool, wet, sort of yucky spring that we had to get outside and enjoy the weather. So, there we are. Forgot to push the button. Now you can see me. Yes. Um, so, yes, Tools and Techniques Thursday. A little bit more uh, thread painting to talk about this time. We're going to talk about hand thread painting. And I have to tell you, I, I've been watching videos on this pretty much all week. It is fascinating to watch. And it is so much fun to do. I hope you take the chance to give it a test, to give it a try. And uh, I think you just might fall in love with it too. Anyway, I will start by making sure... Oh, there's hi, Anne. Anne's joining us. I will make a start by uh, letting you know that I actually finished the machine painting. So this is thread painting by sewing machine. Any sewing machine, as long as you can work it in free motion. You don't have to have anything fancy. And we got this started a couple of weeks ago. I kind of filled you in last week on it. And I did manage to finish Mr. Fat Chickadee here. I think he looks pretty good. Got him all done. Put a backing batting behind him of a, just a fusible batting, just ironed it on, not a problem. And then I actually used 505 and mounted him on a little piece of, of hardboard there. So now he can stand, he could go in a frame, but uh, I didn't do a lot of quilting on it because the dense stitching of the thread painting tends to pull that fabric in anyways. And we don't want to get wrinkles and puckers. So, that's chickadee number one. How are we going to deal with chickadee number two? And I'm going to hold him up to show you that I've gotten started. A little bit different technique for you. Um, first of all, we start with a pattern. And as you saw with chickadee number one, I just pulled something off of the uh, picture off of the computer, put my little tracing paper up there, drew around them, made a photocopy. So this was the original. But when it comes to hand stitching, we tend to want to work a little bit smaller. So ran them through the photocopier and got a smaller version of Mr. Chickadee. I could have done a different bird, but I think for comparison, it's going to be nice to see how they look the same, but different. And I still have on our handy trusty phone my reference photo that I use primarily for coloration. Uh, the nice thing working by hand, I found, is that you have a little more control over where the colors go. I, I really enjoy working by hand. So let's switch to the close-up and I'm going to show you how we work from that pattern. So 
Same fabric background. This is from the line called Soar, as in birds, S-O-A-R. Gorgeous line of fabric. This is one of the lighter ones right there. And I think it's kind of fun to work on the printed background because if it's um, consistent with what you're trying to stitch, it really adds to it. So I took my reference picture, my pattern, this guy, and I taped it up against the window and I taped my fabric over it. And then I just traced it, and only this time, because of the color of the fabric, I didn't trace it with a wash away marker because I can cover all my lines. What I actually used was a um, uh, colored pencil. They tend to be a little softer. They're going to stick to your fabric a little better. And there's a little bit less chance of them transferring through as the thread goes through them back and forth. So, got him traced. Now, I don't know if you can see it on there, but you can actually, when you've got your colored pencils out, <coughs> you can actually mark on your pattern where certain colors are going to want to go. So that's really helpful as well. Between that and my color reference photo that I got on the phone, it should be no problem. So this is a great technique for people who have trouble staying within the lines. This is a very free, very easy technique. And it uh, definitely, you don't have to be uh, an embroidery expert to do it. I'm pretty sure anybody could tackle this one. You're going to need your fabric. No special preparation to it on the back. You're going to need an embroidery hoop. Keeps your fabric taut enough to have the stitches lay nice and flat. I'm going to suggest a size 10 or 11 sharp for a needle. You don't need a huge eye on it. But basically, whatever you are comfortable using. And I am embroidering with single strand DMC. It's going to go faster if you use two strands or even three, but your results are going to be a little clumpier and it's going to be harder to blend your colors. So, single strand, just as if you were working with uh, a fine point on your pencil. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Doesn't, it's not too hard there. So how do we start? I've done a little bit up here just to give you some reference. And I'm going to start working on his tummy here. I have a white DMC floss and I've tied a knot because I will be backing this when it's finished with some fusible fleece. I love fusible fleece for this type of work. So come up along the outside edge and we are going to take stitches that are different lengths and slightly different angles. So this type of work is often used for animals, for birds. Uh, feathers and fur do beautifully this way. Also flowers and maybe we'll maybe I'll put a flower on this and show it to you later. So we're going to take a nice big stitch about that long. So well, that's not hard. So there's, uh -oh. and of course, thread tangles. There we go. Pull them down. That's one. The next one, and I'm going to space these out. And I'm going to make it a little bit ragged. There we go. Rotate them. I can take a shorter stitch. Now I want this edge to be a little bit uneven and I want this edge to be uneven. So I got a short guy there and I'm going to do a longer one because the whole idea is to get our threads and our colors to blend. So there's no fancy embroidery stitches, no fancy 
tools or equipment, but a lovely relaxing pastime to do in the car, on the plane. Who was I talking to the other day? And they were saying that they had a flight booked and yes you can stitch on the plane. You can't take scissors as yet so the little clover um, thread cutter is an awesome gadget to have with you if you want to take something like this to while away the hours while you wait in the airport or while you travel lots of people traveling these days so now you can see got a few stitches in there you can see how they're they're uneven they're not straight at the bottom they're definitely not straight at the top and they're spaced out <laughs> hey Loanne um, thank you for the comment I love reading your comments everybody I love it because with our um, our our YouTube and our Facebook we don't have that that um, sound like we do on the zoom classes so the hand embroidery check out some of the videos online um it, it just is amazing and i think the other thing that i like about this is it's an older style craft but it doesn't have to be old-fashioned it's uh you could i'm doing a chickadee i mean that that's not exactly modernistic but I was just looking at a particular website can't really give you the, the name of it right now can't remember it but if you if you poke around online there are tons of people who are using this type of technique to do very modern looking things so the skill is more in just learning, practicing how you're going to blend your threads. So I'm going to go up about that far on Mr. Chickadee. And then I'm going to go back over what I've done, starting to fill in the spaces. So technically, this stitch is called long and short because we're making long and short stitches. I got enthusiastic when I threaded the needle and I should have started with a slightly smaller length of thread. If you work with too long a piece of thread, every time you pull it through, there's a bit of wear on that thread and it can get fuzzy and <laughs> Billy says there's some very sassy hand embroidery patterns out there right now. There certainly are. Uh, it's, um, I don't know if it has to do with a pandemic or if the time was just right, but um, there's definitely been a, a resurgence in all of the, the handwork type arts and crafts with a different spin on it. We've had a couple of great books in and I've no doubt shown them to you on our Facebook get-togethers. So this is what I like about this technique. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of working my way back up is you can go over it as many times as you feel it needs until your background is covered. So if I skip ahead, if I miss a spot, I can just go back. I can throw another thread in here and another thread in there. It's very loose. It's very easy. It's very what we used to call painterly. We're just kind of playing. So uh, I have to admit, you probably all know I love doing handwork, but I think... I've almost found a new passion, at least for a while. I would love to use this technique to do even more intricate things. So 
so it's not a fast process it's very very um relaxing but it's also very responsive to what you want i'm already discovering that the second chickadee is not quite the same shape wise in here as the one i did by on the machine but that's okay because the chickadees aren't all the same but the only thing that i'm kind of getting tired of is i want to put some colors in here i like color which is why i said yeah maybe i'll maybe i'll um uh put a flower on it so i've got that started can i hold it up nice and close yeah it's not too bad so a nice jaggedy edge here that looks a bit like feathers this needs a bit more filling in and so i can go over that pretty much until i run out of thread So what other fun things are going on at my sewing room these days? Well, if you haven't had the chance to come into the store recently, you uh, may notice that we have done a lot of reorganizing. Um, Leah and Anne and Chelsea have been spent the last about two weeks pushing heavy objects around to give the store a nice, bright, brand new look. Uh, and to make room for some of the new things that have been coming through the door as well. Um, so if you do drop in and you go, uh, wait a minute, it was there before, it's probably been moved, and don't be afraid to ask somebody. So that's one exciting thing. Currently, Anne and Leah, and they've maybe been... I haven't checked throughout the day today. I know they did post one brief Facebook Live uh, earlier in the week. They are down in Indian Wells, California. I'll bet it's hotter there, or maybe not, um, at the Bernina University. So learning a few nice new things about Bernina, about machines, maybe some new products. And I suspect next week you are going to have a whole lot of fun talking to Anne and Leah about some of those things. So, as I've worked this through, and I'm working the same color. Get it up nice and close. So I'm purposely making my stitches go in between, mixing in, overlapping to give a nice smooth effect. You can work harder um, to make this look very smooth or depending on the subject matter, you can make it all furry and spiky the way some of our four-footed friends can look. So you can see I'm working my way back along there gradually blending threads that is actually all there is to it so nothing too difficult this i think would be something that especially if you were an embroiderer to start with i think this would be a fun technique to work with the little guys give them a chance to Especially if somebody's got an interest in, in the arts. Maybe they already draw or paint. It's, it's just, and you can see how fast it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I guess that means I've done that color. So that's the lightest white there. And I think because Mr. Chickadee is has a lot of that color. I'm going to carry on with that to fill in this part, blend it into here, and then I can start adding 
some of the creamy tones, some grays in the wing. So now that that came out on the front and I want to put him on the back of the work. There we go. Let's pop you up front here. Let's see. There we go. So while I um, finish off this thread, I just wanted to point out some of the things that are on the table behind me. Um, we have just a few more of our beautiful, uh, what would you call them, outdoorsy fabrics. They make great backgrounds for this type of project. The first, the darkest one that you see on, I don't know if it's my left or my right, depending, depending on which way I'm looking. Come here, needle. There we go. Yep. Anyway, deal with it. This dark one here is the only coordinate that we have. You can see it is pine trees to a panel that I am really, really tempted by. And that is this one. This is a larger than usual printed panel. I'm going to actually, I, I will hold it right up. Uh, no, I'm going to actually detach them like this. There we go. There's two, two versions in this. The line is called Call of the Wild. So this is actually quite a large panel. This is the frost one. And you can see how it has a number of wilderness images on it. And it's designed to be cut apart and dealt with individually, not to be quilted as a single panel. Mr. Mr. Bear is there. But when this one first came in, I got to show you this. In fact, I might even show you on the close-up because it really, really ties in. There, nope, not that one. Uh, that one. This really ties in to what we have been working with today. This, when I saw them opening this panel, I looked at that owl and I went, <gasps> I just have to embroider him. So this technique of hand thread painting, you can take an image like that. Instead of pulling a design off the internet, instead of uh, drawing one out, this is already printed on the fabric for you. All you have to do is get your threads in there and start painting right over top of the image. You can do the whole picture. You can just choose to do certain parts of it. But this one, I went, oh, he's pretty. And again, feathers, soft things like this little guy over here. He looks like a red pole. Are perfect, perfect images to work some thread painting onto. Some of the other pictures on on this there's a wolf now that's that's a pretty ambitious project but there is no reason <clears throat> why you couldn't thread paint the whole wolf if you wanted to here's another one that is just it's just made it's just made for the stitching now this one back them up a little bit has got uh one two three four four of these little guys on them like that so i might be inclined to even just cut that out and treat it by itself so you don't have to uh oh i buried my there we are you don't have to worry so much about finding a pattern drawing a pattern you know if you don't feel comfortable sketching your own design there's lots of pre-printed fabrics out there that really lend themselves to a thread painting technique, whether it's done with a sewing machine or by hand. So, and I think this is one of the greatest. This is the frost panel, and I think there's a fall panel as well. Huge panels, lots of pictures to play with, 
and lots of things that you can do with it. So that's about all I can tell you about hand thread painting for today. It's a very, very straightforward, simple, easy to do and very relaxing um, technique that you can while away the time with on these hot summer days. So I will carry on with Mr. Chickadee over the next little while. Hopefully next week I'll be able to, maybe maybe I'll crash one of the other ladies' um, Facebook sessions and, and show you just how far we managed to get with it. But uh, yeah, I'm really having fun with this and, and uh, yeah, we just might have to do some more of that. It, it's a whole lot easier than some of the other things we've tackled. So thank you for joining us. Billy says she popped into the store the other day, and it, it does. It looks really, really nice. It's, it's always nice to have a... It's like rearranging the furniture at home. You know, you sweep out the dust bunnies that have been hiding in the corners, and everything just feels cleaner and fresher and gives you a little bit of a lift when you walk through the door so it's always nice to see you stop by and say hi um, enjoy our summer weather because things will be changing undoubtedly before we know it uh, what's coming up not too much coming up for classes next week I'm sure Leah and Anne want to have a bit of a relax after uh, after their trip down to California. I do have on uh, Wednesday the 20th, we have our long arm certification that we have, um, we've, we've gone back to a class setting as opposed to an individual. And I believe there's still room in that. So if the whole idea of learning to run the long arm and quilting your own quilts appeals to you, there's still a chance to pop into that class. And I would love to see any of you do that. So otherwise, take care, everyone. Remember that you can like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel and uh, find even more content uh, on our YouTube channel. That's where we post a lot of our new owners' videos, for example, on our sewing machines. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed to our newsletter, that's another good way of staying in touch. Just go onto our website and there will be a link there that lets you put in the appropriate information and you will get our weekly uh, e-news to keep you up to date on what is going on in the store, classes that are coming up that you can sign up for, some exclusive classes, some, some specials, just keeps in keeps you in touch with us keeps us in touch with you as well so take care everyone have a great rest of the day i will likely be back with you tomorrow where i have something completely different to talk about but really fun and exciting anyways so yeah double duty this week but hey that's all right it'll be friday um until then thanks for joining me and uh stay cool everybody take care